The United States is offering to release an arms dealer by the name of Victor Bout in exchange for WNBA star Griner in a prisoner swap. Now, WNBA star Brittany Griner is still unfortunately detained in Russia after being caught with hashish oil. The Russian government has asked for Vadim Krasikov, who is sentenced to life in prison for murdering a Chechen fighter. They want him to be released, but it seems that this is not something that the United States is receptive toward. The request was seen as problematic because this gentleman remains in German custody, not US custody as such. And because the request was not communicated formally, but rather through the Russian spy agency FSB back channel. The US government did not view it as a legitimate counter to the US offer. Now, there was a proposal by the Russians that the United States government was receptive to, and that's where we get into a discussion about Victor Bout. Now, Victor Bout is someone who has an interesting nickname to say the least. The Biden administration has proposed trading the merchant of death, as he's referred to, for the imprisoned basketball player, as well as a former Marine held in Russia on what are considered trumped up espionage charges. Now, the merchant of death, Victor Bout, is an infamous arms dealer with connections to the Taliban. Uh, by the way, we've also armed the Taliban ourselves uh, in order to help them defeat the Soviets. So I think that's an important piece of context that we should uh, let people know about. Um, Al Qaeda and various militant groups in Africa. Victor Bout, a former Soviet military officer, was once one of the world's most wanted men, accused of selling weapons to Al Qaeda, the Taliban, and various governments and militants in Rwanda, Sierra Leone, the Democratic Republic of Congo, and Algeria. The movie, the movie Lord of War, starring Nicolas Cage, was released in 2005 and was based on his case specifically. And so the the fact that the Biden administration is open to releasing him to the Russians in exchange for Brittany Griner and this other individual who's been imprisoned in Russia on trumped up charges is controversial. You have some people who agree with it because the idea is we got to get our people back and we should do it even if it means we have to let go of one Russian bad guy. And then there are others like John Bolton, we'll get to him in just a minute, who are like, no, I would really rethink this. This is a bad idea. Um, you know, Mark, you had mentioned that you have some thoughts on this story. I'm really curious where you stand on it. Well, I'll try to just condense it. Just first of all, the jetliner view of it, of course, is that being high profile as Brittany is, I don't know her personally, but I like to refer to her as first name because it makes it seem like I do know her. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but, 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 you know, she is someone so high profile and you feel as though she really got caught in the crosshairs. It was right before the Ukraine war started. And, uh, you want to bring her home and it's and it's made news day after day after day. That's a good thing and a bad thing. The good thing about being high profile is that it gets everybody's attention. As I say, it's on the news or it's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And the White House and State Department begin to bring the cavalry in. The problem is that by being so high profile, the demands can be so unreasonable and Russia really gets all the leverage in this particular scenario. But you'd rather be high profile than no profile. Right. There are prisoners, American prisoners all around the world. No one knows about them, no one knows their names. And the one thing that this deal, which hasn't come through yet has, is it has enough profile to get everybody's attention. The last thing I would say is, it's weird to negotiate these things so publicly though. <laughs> you know, And it almost makes me wonder, you know, what, what this negotiations is, is about. It's even been speculated publicly that, if the State Department is talking about this so so uh, uh, openly, that it might actually be a deal that the Russians have already declined. And what they're trying to do is send a message to the public saying, hey, don't worry, we're trying to get her out and we and any American around the world, we the government will try to get you back. It's a, it's a mess because obviously if you negotiate, you've set the table for more hostages to be taken and all those arguments that follow. But She's so high profile, I'd be very surprised if the American government doesn't 
come up with whatever they need to to bring her home. Ravana, what are your thoughts? Uh, you mentioned you're a WNBA fan, so I'm guessing you've been following this story from the beginning. Yeah, I played basketball for all my life. Brittany Griner's an icon. Always looked up to her. So like, this has been, you know, I mean, for for the the few of the proud the WNBA fans, this has really been been huge news and a story we've been following. Um, but for me, it's a no brainer and not just because I am a WNBA fan and not just because Brittany Griner is someone I've always looked up to. Uh, you make the deal, you get her mm-hmm. back because mm-hmm. I mean, at the end of the day, she's a US citizen. She's not she's not a member of the military. She didn't sign up. She didn't sign up for anything like this. The charges against her are, you know, not just politically, but obviously racially motivated as well. It's a really common um, even for, for non celebrity or a non high status individuals who are black who go to Russia to, to be charged with things related to to drugs because it's systemically racist just as much you know i mean different ways than america is but but they deal with the same the same issues in their criminal justice system um uh, but at the end of the day right like and, and we'll talk about john bolton in a second but you know i i just don't think that there's any validity to those arguments because you know again she's a united states citizen this is a woman she is a friend a wife a family member, a teammate, basketball player, it doesn't matter, she's a person. And just because, you know, as an individual, she might not have, you know, geopolitical importance, that doesn't mean that her life is not important and and she deserves whatever it takes to get her back home. Yeah, I, I agree with you because, you know, the controversial component of the story is that, oh, well, you know, the Biden administration is considering releasing the merchant of death. And the talking point is, well, this is a, I mean, this is an arms dealer. He he deals arms to bad guys like the US government does. <laughs> we want to be the only that. arms dealers on the block, <laughs> Anna. We don't want to have to go arrest another one. We need <laughs> we need to be the only arms dealer. We want to be the merchants of death. We just death. don't want any competition. Exactly. Like we want to monopolize the game, okay? We're, we're, our defense industry gets to be the ones who make the decisions about where the where the arms go. Okay, merchant of death, unacceptable. No, but you know, I just think if that's the argument you're gonna make, you have to understand how weak that argument is. It's like a house of cards when you just take a second to think about what we engage in. Well, when I say we, I mean our government engages in in terms of selling weapons. I mean, Biden just said that he would continue selling weapons to Saudi Arabia. And Saudi Arabia is a brutal dictatorship. And they're, they not only brutalize their own people, they can order the assassination and dismemberment of Washington Post journalists with you know, impunity. It's, it's unbelievable. So I don't buy that argument at all. And you know, just to make sure I cover all my basis, that perspective is not shared by everyone. Jeremy Bash, who is a, an ex chief of staff at the CIA, uh, doesn't think this is a bad idea. We value our own citizens a thousand times more than we value the foreign criminal. Israel takes the same approach. They trade a thousand Hamas fighters for one IDF soldier. Um, I don't know how true that is, but n- nonetheless, uh, we in the United States take the same attitude. We will do almost anything to save an American life. Uh, hmm. It started off fine, that comment, that quote, uh, and it it kind of ended in a bit of a disaster. Like the, we will do almost anything to save an American life. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I don't think that's what uh, our government has demonstrated. But the point remains. You know, the point he's making here, I think, is a valid one in regard to getting Brittany Griner back. And if we have to release a, a bad guy to the Russians, if we have to do this exchange. Might as well just do it. Yeah, I think the point there is that when it comes to prisoner exchanges, we are willing to go probably farther than we see other sides go. I mean, if I'm trying to jujitsu that and figure how how that that statement makes sense, I guess that's what it refers to. Typically, these prisoner swaps, and you just alluded to it, they happen on the battlefield or they happen around some kind of military thing. So you're trading soldiers for soldiers type thing. This is a you know, this is an odd bargaining chip that the Russians have picked up. And you have so much public sentiment in Brittany Griner's corner that it does appear that the US will step up with every manner of accommodation to try to get her home. We'll see how this all plays out. But I do think one of the other reasons why Biden has decided to kind of make this public is he was getting a lot of heat because it seemed like he wasn't doing a damn thing about it. So um, there is some 
positive benefit <laughs> to um, openly talking about this because it at least lets the American people know, you know, Griner has not been forgotten. Thanks for watching the Young Turks. I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.